Hey there, I'm Harry, a 28-year-old gearhead turned automotive engineer. Before I dive into this wild ride of a story, do me a solid and smash that like button and subscribe. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. So, I'm living the dream designing cutting-edge engines by day and tinkering with my pride and joy by night. A cherry red 1967 Mustang that my mom left me before she passed. That car, it's not just metal and rubber, it's memories. You know, my dad, Frank. He's been my rock since mom died. We're thick as thieves, or at least I thought we were. Harry, my boy, he'd say, clapping me on the back. Your mother would be so proud of you. Those words meant the world to me. But lately, something's been off. Dad's been jumpy, taking calls and whispers, disappearing for hours. I tried to brush it off, but that nagging feeling wouldn't quit. You're overthinking it, man, my best bud Mike told me over beers one night. Maybe he's got a lady friend. I nearly choked on my drink. Dude, gross, he's my dad. Speaking of relationship drama, my ex, Veronica, had been blowing up my phone. Harry, baby, can't we talk? Her text would say. But after catching her with her hands in the cookie jar, and by cookie jar, I mean my bank account, I was done. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, not gonna happen. But back to dad. Things got weirder by the day. He'd ask odd questions about my work schedule, my plans for the weekend. It was like living with a stranger wearing my dad's face. Then came that Friday. I rolled up to the house ready for our weekly father-son barbecue, only to find the garage door wide open and my Mustang... gone. Dad? I called out, panic rising in my throat. Dad, where are you? The house was empty, eerily quiet. On the kitchen counter, a hastily scrawled note. Son, had to take care of some business. Don't worry about the car. Back soon. Dad? My hands shook as I dialed his number. Straight to voicemail. I tried again. And again. Come on, Dad, I muttered, pacing the kitchen. What the hell is going on? I called Mike, my voice cracking. Dude, my car's gone. Dad's gone. I don't know what to do. Whoa, slow down, Mike said. I'm on my way. We'll figure this out. As I waited for Mike, I couldn't shake this feeling of dread. The Mustang wasn't just a car, it was the last piece of mom I had left. And now, like her, it was gone. Little did I know this was just the beginning. Dad's disappearing act, the missing car, it was all part of a betrayal so deep, so twisted, it would turn my world upside down. The next morning, I was a wreck. No sleep, no answers, just a gnawing pit in my stomach. I'd called every hospital, police station, and friend my dad had. Nothing. Maybe he just needed a break, Mike suggested, but even he didn't sound convinced. I was about to respond when the phone rang, unknown number. Hello? Hi. This is Stardust Wedding Chapel in Las Vegas. I'm just confirming the arrangements for the Frank and Veronica wedding this afternoon. Is this Harry? My world tilted. I'm sorry, what? The cheerful voice continued, oblivious to my shock. The classic car rental for the getaway vehicle is all set. It's going to be so romantic. I hung up, my mind reeling. Mike, pack a bag. We're going to Vegas. The flight was a blur. My thoughts raced. Dad and Veronica? It had to be a mistake. But deep down, I knew. All those secretive calls, the weird questions. It all made sense now. We touched down in Vegas and raced to the chapel. As we burst through the doors, I heard those fateful words. If anyone objects to this union, speak now or forever hold your peace. I object, I shouted, my voice echoing through the tacky, glitter-covered room. Dad spun around, his face pale. Harry, what are you doing here? Veronica, in a gaudy white dress, had the audacity to look annoyed. Babe, who invited your son? I was shaking with rage. Dad, what the hell is going on? Where's my car? Dad at least had the decency to look ashamed. Son, I can explain. Explain what? How you're marrying my ex-girlfriend? Or how you stole mom's car to pay for this circus? The truth came tumbling out. Dad had been seeing Veronica for months. They'd cooked up this plan together. Sell my car, elope in Vegas, start a new life. We're in love, Harry, Veronica purred, wrapping herself around my dad. You should be happy for us. I felt sick. Happy? You're literally half his age, and you. I turned to Dad. How could you? That car was all I had left of Mom. Your mother would have wanted me to be happy, Dad argued weakly. Don't you dare bring Mom into this, I spat. 
she'd be ashamed of you both. The wedding guests, a motley crew of Vegas tourists and what looked like paid actors, watched in fascination. One even had popcorn. Show's over, folks, Mike announced, ushering people out. I turned to leave, unable to look at either of them anymore. Harry, wait! Dad called out. We can work this out. I'll buy you a new car, a better one. I stopped, my hand on the door. You don't get it, do you? It was never about the car. It was about trust, about family, and you've destroyed both. As Mike and I walked out into the harsh Vegas sun, I felt hollow. My car was gone, sold to fund this farce of a wedding. My relationship with my dad? In shambles. And Veronica? She'd played us both like fiddles. The flight home was silent. Mike tried to comfort me, but what could he say? My world had been turned upside down in the span of 24 hours. As we landed, I made a decision. This wasn't over. The betrayal, the lies, the manipulation, it all ended now. Dad and Veronica thought they'd won, that they'd ride off into the sunset in my mother's car. But they had no idea what was coming. You okay, man? Mike asked as we got off the plane. I nodded, a grim determination settling over me. I will be. Once I set things right... Little did they know, their Vegas wedding was just the beginning. The house of cards they'd built was about to come crashing down, and I'd be the one to blow it over. The weeks after Vegas were a blur. I called in sick to work, ignored my friends, and spent most days staring at the empty spot in the garage where my Mustang used to be. Mike tried to get me out, but I just couldn't face the world. Dude, you can't keep this up, Mike said, barging into my apartment one day. I've been doing some digging, and you're not going to believe what I found. He spread out a bunch of papers on my coffee table. Bank statements, old newspaper clippings, social media printouts. It was like looking at a conspiracy theorist's wet dream. Your dad's been gambling, big time. He's in debt up to his eyeballs, Mike explained. And Veronica? She's got a history of cozying up to rich older men and bleeding them dry. I felt sick. How did I not see this coming? Mike shrugged. Love makes you blind, man. But get this. Your dad's been selling off more than just the car. Family heirlooms, your mom's jewelry, even that fancy watch your grandpa left you. I jumped up, racing to the safe where I kept the most valuable family items. Empty. All of it gone. I'm going to kill him, I growled. Easy, tiger, Mike cautioned. We need to be smart about this. They've screwed over a lot of people. We just need to connect the dots. We spent days piecing together the extent of their con. Dad had maxed out credit cards, taken out loans, all to fund his gambling habit. And Veronica? She'd been playing him like a fiddle, encouraging his addiction while siphoning off money for herself. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I drove to Dad's house, ready for a showdown. Harry, Dad exclaimed when he opened the door. I've been trying to reach you. Can we talk? I brushed past him into the living room. Oh, now you want to talk? After you stole from me? After you married my ex? Dad's face crumpled. Son, I know I messed up, but I love Veronica. She understands me in a way your mother never did. Don't you dare bring Mom into this, I spat. You've been gambling again, haven't you? How much do you owe? His silence was all the answer I needed. And you, I turned to Veronica, who'd been lurking in the doorway. How many other men have you conned? How many lives have you ruined? Veronica's eyes narrowed. Watch it, Harry. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I know plenty, I shot back. I know about the DUIs you've had magically disappear. The boyfriends who mysteriously lost their fortunes. It ends now. Dad tried to step between us. Son, please. We can work this out. I'll get help. I'll make it up to you. I laughed bitterly. Make it up to me? You sold mom's car. You pawned off our family history. There's no coming back from that. As I stormed out, I heard Veronica hiss, You need to control your son, Frank. He could ruin everything. That's when I knew this wasn't over. They thought they'd gotten away with it, that I'd roll over and accept their lies. But they had no idea what was coming. Back at my place, Mike was waiting. How'd it go? I grabbed a beer from the fridge, my mind racing. We're taking them down, both of them. You in? Mike grinned. Hell yeah. What's the plan? As we started plotting, I felt a fire in my gut I hadn't felt in weeks. Dad and Veronica had no idea the storm that was about to hit them, and I was going to enjoy every second of it. The trap was set. 
Mike and I had spent weeks planning, gathering evidence, and making connections. It was time to spring into action. First, an anonymous tip to the gambling commission about Dad's illegal betting. Then, a carefully orchestrated social media campaign that caught the attention of Veronica's former victims. You sure about this? Mike asked as we hit send on the final email. I nodded grimly. They made their bed, now they can lie in it. The dominoes fell faster than we expected. Within days, the gambling commission was knocking on Dad's door. Veronica's past cons were splashed across local news channels. Then came the kicker. Dad and Veronica, desperate for cash, tried to access my inheritance, the one Mom had left specifically for me. Mr. Thompson, the lawyer said over the phone, your father and his wife attempted to withdraw funds from your trust. Thanks to the safeguards you put in place, we were able to prevent it. I couldn't help but smile. Thanks. And what about the other matter we discussed? The classic car? We've traced it. With the evidence of fraudulent sale, we should be able to recover it for you. It was all coming together. Dad and Veronica's schemes were unraveling in public view. Their so-called friends abandoned them. The country club revoked their membership. It was a spectacular fall from grace. Of course, they tried to reach out. Dad left tearful voicemails. Veronica sent manipulative texts. I ignored them all. Harry, please, Dad begged when he cornered me outside work. We can fix this. I'll do anything. I just shook my head. You had your chance, Dad. A thousand chances. It's too late now. Months passed. I threw myself into work, got promoted, started dating again. Life was looking up. Then, one sunny Saturday, I heard a familiar rumble. My Mustang, gleaming like new, pulled up in my driveway. Special delivery, the lawyer grinned, tossing me the keys. As I ran my hand over the smooth hood, I felt a chapter closing. The car was back, but it wasn't the same. I'd changed too much. A year after Vegas, I was in a good place. Work was great, I had real friends, and I'd even started volunteering at a gambling addiction center. The news about Dad and Veronica trickled in. Dad was facing charges for tax evasion and illegal gambling. Veronica had skipped town, but word was the feds were closing in. As I drove my Mustang along the coast, windows down and music blasting, I reflected on the wild ride. The betrayal had nearly broken me, but I'd come out stronger. I'd learned the hard way about self-respect, about setting boundaries, about choosing your own family. The old Harry would have forgiven Dad, would have let Veronica manipulate him again. But that Harry was gone. In his place was someone stronger, wiser, and a hell of a lot happier. As the sun set over the ocean, I gunned the engine. The road ahead was clear, and for the first time in a long time, so was my future. Sometimes, the best revenge isn't about getting even. It's about moving forward and never looking back. Harry's journey of betrayal and redemption has come to an end. Now, we want to hear from you. Was Harry justified in completely cutting ties with his father? Or should he have left room for reconciliation? Is there a point where family betrayal becomes unforgivable? Or should we always leave the door open for second chances? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective could help others wrestling with similar family dilemmas. If Harry's story resonated with you, hit that like button and subscribe for more gripping tales of overcoming betrayal and finding strength. Join our community as we explore the complexities of family, trust, and personal growth.